All right, Chloe, are you sure you're comfortable with this? As comfortable as I'll ever be. It's not too late to back out, you know. I won't hold it against you. Do you think this will help get your brother out? I think there's a good chance. Then we're doing it. All right, thank you. Agent Green should be here in a few minutes. Take this recorder and wait in the bathroom until you hear us come into my office, then go out the other door into the waiting room. I don't know if he would be able to recognize you in person, but I don't want to risk it. Okay, why am I recording this? I thought it might be easier for you to talk into it as you listen to Agent Green's thoughts. It's faster than writing. But what about Sarah? Won't she notice what I'm doing? Sarah is very good at ignoring many things. Okay then, I guess we'll just... Yes, good. Okay, just waiting in the bathroom now. This feels very silly. God, I can hear Dr. Bright pacing in her own head. She's really nervous. <gasps> oh, I hear something. Agent Green, come in. Thank you, Dr. Bright. It's good to see you. Right, why don't we go into my office? Aw, oh, he's thinking about how pretty she looks. Although, I guess it's not actually that cute if he's some sort of evil guy, but I don't know, it sounded nice. Okay, they seem to be in their meeting now. I guess that means I'm up. Sorry, Sarah. I know it looks like I'm talking to myself, but it's, um, it's an exercise that Dr. Bright is having me do for therapy reasons. Don't worry about it, Chloe. Pretend that I'm not even here. Right. Okay. So they're talking now about, oh, about me. This is weird. The agent is thinking about how it's strange I have a more valuable power than my mother. That's sort of rude. And he's thinking about genetics. He's thinking about why Dr. Bright doesn't have a power when her brother does. Okay, here we go. Come on, think about where Mark is. Okay, nope. Now he's thinking about how cute and smart Dr. Bright is. Jesus, guy, get a grip. Okay, now we've moved on to other patients. Oh, and he's thinking about my mother again. I guess he's met her because I can see her in his thoughts, except she's younger. He likes her. Thinks she's nice. Dr. Bright is thinking about her as well, but she's worried. She doesn't want to talk about my mother or me. Thanks, Dr. Bright. I can tell you're looking out. I think I'm beginning to get why Dr. Bright likes taking notes this way. This is kind of fun. Oh, wow, someone who can make fire. That is so cool. Okay, uh, moving on. God, he thinks almost as fast as she does. I see why they were... Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Damien, what are you doing here? You're not scheduled for an appointment. When am I ever? Oh, hey, I, I think I've seen you around before. You're another one of Dr. B's patients, right? Um, well, I mean, I mean I'm at her office, so... Right, of course, stupid question. I'm Damien. Nice to meet you. Yeah, sure. And your name is... Sorry, I'm just here to see Dr. Bright. Oh, no, I, I'm not trying to intrude. I just think we might have some things in common. Beyond our therapist, I mean. I highly doubt that. Sarah, do you want to intercom Dr. Bright? Maybe let her know who's in her waiting room? Oh, no, I don't think you want to do that, Sarah. In fact, I feel like you really want a latte right now. From that great new cafe, uh, 12 blocks away. Doesn't that sound yummy? Actually, I do want a latte. Wonderful! Be a doll. Get me a croissant, will you? That sounds like a great idea. I bet it does. What? Sarah? That's better. All right. Now that our girl Friday is out of the way, let's have a little chat. How did you... Oh, interesting. Dr. Bright hasn't filled you in. Well, she certainly filled me in about you. Mind reader. Very cool. Excuse me? That's your ability, right? You can read minds. Oh, God, did I get the wrong girl? What? No. I mean, yes, I can read minds. How did you know that? Like I said, Dr. Bright told me. I've been her patient for a long time. She tells me stuff. So, can you hear what I'm thinking right now? Um, no, I can't. Wait, really? Maybe you're not thinking enough. Huh. Dr. B must have been right about our powers. What do you mean? Well, she's got this theory that my power doesn't work on you because the uh, way our abilities function is incompatible. Like the same end of two magnets. They're too similar to work on each other. Do you hear people's thoughts too? Not exactly. Uh, more like I put thoughts into people's heads. Like I did with Sarah just then. Just planted the thought that she wanted a coffee and voila! You can make people do whatever you want? In a sense, yes. That's immoral. 
You're passing judgment on me? Really? And what exactly are you doing here right now, nosy Nelly? And with Dr. Bright's recorder, no less. That's none of your business. Listen, if you don't have an appointment, then you should probably just leave. Don't you want to learn more about me? Not particularly. Oh, come on. I bet you've never met another atypical before. I have, in fact. My mu- That is also none of your business. Well, have you ever met someone you couldn't use your ability on? No. Me neither. It's weird, right? But kind of nice. I don't have many unpredictable interactions these days. This is exciting for me. I'm thrilled for you. What? You're not enjoying the silence? Must get pretty noisy hearing everyone's thoughts all the time. If you must know, it isn't complete silence from you. What do you mean? Well, I can't hear what you're thinking, but I can still feel your consciousness. Oh, yeah? And what does it feel like? Cold. Barren. Total wasteland, as far as I can tell. Yeah, that's a bit harsh. Well, it's your mind. And it bothers you? Oh, it scared you. That first time I saw you here, you looked at me and you were totally freaked out. Is that why? Yes. Feeling everyone's minds all the time isn't exactly pleasant to begin with, but I would rather stand in a crowd than face whatever's going on in your head. Oh. I didn't realize I was causing so much discomfort. Well, I imagine it's uncomfortable for you, too, not being able to use your twisted power on me. No, actually. Like I said, it's kind of nice. Believe it or not, it's not always a walk in the park having people do what you want. I doubt that. Yeah, okay, let me guess. You're wondering if I'm lying through my teeth right now. I bet you're thinking, gosh, I sure want him to be honest with me. Well, imagine thinking that and then having it come true. Any time I want someone to tell me the truth, they do. And while that doesn't seem to be a problem for you anyway, it can really sting when you don't see it coming. Maybe, if you were a better person, the truth wouldn't hurt as much. Okay, that's a fair shot. All I'm saying is this. We were both born with these powers. No point in not using them. Yeah, but how are you using it? Like, what would you be making me do right now if your ability worked on me? Honestly, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. What is that supposed to mean? I don't go out of my way to talk to people, especially normal people. The only reason I wanted to meet you was because my ability didn't work. Are you trying to tell me that you don't use your power at all? No, of course I do, but I... I've never done anything really bad with it. I would hate to learn what your definition of bad is. Likewise. Which brings us back to the subject at hand. What are you doing here? I know for a fact that Dr. B has a meeting right now. And how would you know that? I may have finagled her calendar from Sarah. See what I mean? That would fit into any person's definition of bad. And where does spying fit in, huh? Yeah, I can put two and two together. Why would the good doctor invite her young patient to sit in her waiting room while she had a meeting? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I have an appointment. No, you usually come in on Tuesdays. Excuse me? Are you following me? No, I I just... I notice things. I spend a lot of time in this area, and I'm observant. Sure. Bet you're really wishing you could read my mind right now, am I right? It's not bad to want to know if someone is lying to you. You say it's so hard to deal with someone's honesty, but I do that all the time. People are honest when they think. Oh, come on. I mean, I get that you're a rainbows and sunshine kind of gal, but you don't really believe that, do you? People lie to themselves all the time, out loud and otherwise. It's a little different than being compelled to tell the truth. Then stop compelling people. I have stopped, in fact. Well, I mean, mostly. I'm, uh, recovered. Like an alcoholic. One who still drinks occasionally. You do know what recovered means, right? I'm just saying that I've gotten better. But growing up like this was tricky. I mean, you must get that, right? Telepathy can't have been an easy thing to deal with as a kid. My ability only started recently, and I've had no trouble learning to control myself, so forgive me if I don't buy your excuses. Really? Well, that's certainly interesting. See, isn't it fun learning about each other? We share this thing that not many other people would get. Talking to Dr. B is all fine and dandy, but she can't really ever understand what it's like, even if it does run in her blood. What? Well, you know, her brother. How do you know so much about Dr. Bright? 
Have you forced her to tell you things about her personal life? Well, kind of. I mean, I wanted to know, so she told me. Like, I've gotten better, but I still slip up from time to time. Okay, so sometimes I slip up on purpose. But once I found out that she worked with other atypicals, well, I just had to know everything about her. I think that's fair. It's hideous. You can't force someone to tell you their intimate feelings. <laughs> yeah. And how do you know about Dr. Bright's brother, huh? He's not someone she just chats about. Yeah, I thought so. We're not so different, you and I. I. I just hear what someone is already thinking. You make them think things. That's totally different. But the people you hear don't have a choice over what they tell you. I bet most of them don't even know. I mean, you're big brother snatching information from them without even telling them. At least people want to tell me things. But only because you make them, they don't have a choice either. I doubt many people would thank you for that, especially Dr. Bright. You're right. They don't. But don't worry. That would never hurt Dr. B. I know you're scared of me, which, if we're being honest, is sort of ironic because you are probably the last person on the planet who has reason to be, but I value the doc very much. She's like the big sister I never had. Somehow I doubt she thinks the same about you. Damien, what the hell are you doing here? What up, Doc? Dr. Bright, is that how you address your patients? Um, uh, no. Damien isn't a patient. He's... I'm a friend. Her, uh, closest friend, in fact. I see. Uh, well. <clears throat> well, I guess I should get out of your hair. <laughs> Leave you to your Friday night. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, miss. My goodness, this is a very busy waiting room for a Friday afternoon. Yes, indeed. Hello, C Christine. You're here to pick up Sarah, correct? Um, yes. Ye yep, we were just about to head out. Oh, yes, where is Sarah? Uh, bathroom. Ah, well, well, give her my best. Lovely girl. Absolutely. Goodbye, Agent Green. Have a pleasant weekend. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bright. You as well. Well, all of you. All of you have a nice weekend. <clears throat> Thanks, Agent. Pleasure to meet you. Sure. Bye now. Damien, this is completely crossing the line. Chloe, are you all right? What on earth do you think you're doing? I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop by. Of course, and this has nothing to do with the meeting I just had. Ah, yes, Agent Green. Spiffy-looking fella you got there, Dr. B. How are things at the AM? He knows about the AM. Wait, she knows about the AM? Ah, right. Of course, you were spying, you little mink. Oh, don't try to be cute, Damien. Why did you lie to Agent Green about who Damien was just now? They don't know about Damien. They think he's a psychic? A psychic, really? Chloe, you reading my mind doesn't actually serve us if you keep relaying everything out loud. Oh, wow. Cool. She really can read minds. Oh, right. Sorry. Wait, but seriously, why not tell them about me? Wouldn't that be the easiest way to get rid of me? Yes, Damien, it would be. And don't think it hasn't crossed my mind. But the AM has never met someone of your ability. So if I were to hand you over, they would immediately lock you up and experiment on you. Stick you with needles and electrodes and do all manner of things to get to the root of the power. And then they would extract it and exploit it for their own gain. And while you are a very irritating, power-tripping man, you aren't actually the Antichrist you aspire to be. So I'm willing to put up with you if it means those people don't gain even more power. Oh. Okay, then. Well, uh, I can see I'm not wanted here. I'll be back next week for a session, Dr. B. See you around, Chloe. Are you sure you don't want to hand him over, Dr. Bright? You're sure you're not, you know, under his influence? Quite sure. His ability wears off fairly quickly, and anyway, I've become good at resisting it. But, I don't know, maybe he could be used as leverage to get Mark back. Chloe, I'm surprised at you. I just meant he doesn't seem like a very good guy. No, he's not. And you should definitely stay away from him. But he's not an evil guy either. He's just, well, he's just a bit pathetic, to be honest. But you hate him. You're scared of him. That's what I heard you thinking when he first... Oh. You're scared of how you feel when you see him, not what he'll make you do. 
Damien's an ass, yes, but he's never actually broken any major laws. Well, beyond some petty pickpocketing of my things, but yes, when I see him, talk to him, I just think, what would I do if I had his power? He just uses it to try and spend time with people, only to be disappointed when he realizes they wouldn't be pretending to like him if he weren't projecting his own desire for company. Well, now he mostly uses it to skip lines in shops, I think. But if I could do what he does, well, Mark wouldn't be locked up, that's for sure. I'm not sure what lines I wouldn't cross. And that's what scares you? Yes. He really does suck, though. <laughs> yes, he does. Were you able to hear anything from Agent Green? No, I'm sorry. I was listening, but then Damien came in and distracted me, and... No. Okay. Well, Damien made this particular mess, so I may call on him to clean it up. You mean... Are you sure that's wise? There are a few more avenues to explore, but I don't want to risk any more people. I certainly don't want to rope you back into this. Damien is the very definition of expendable. Oh... Do you have my recorder? Oh, yeah, sorry. Here you go. Thank you for listening to The Bright Sessions. Today's episode was written and directed by Lauren Shippen and produced by Misha Stanton. The voice of Dr. Bright is Julia Morizawa. The voice of Agent Green is Ian McEwen. The voice of Chloe is Anna Laurie. And the voice of Damien is Charlie Ian. And this episode featured a special appearance by Elizabeth Laird as the voice of Sarah. If you want to help us make more of The Bright Sessions, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash thebrightsessions or donate through our website, thebrightsessions.com. Also on that website, you will find bonus content about the story and characters, as well as info on the cast and crew. And if you haven't already, follow us on Tumblr, on Twitter at Bright Podcast, and even on Reddit. But for now, thanks for listening and stay strange. <laughs>